That's about man. That's one of those games I kind of regret not getting back in the day. When I started going to the flea markets and pawn shops and stuff, that was about a $40 game. And that was like the most expensive game I would see out there. I'm like, it's not even a good game. Fuzzy Pickles what? What up YouTube, Queen8 here, Movember's Man of the Month. A couple things I wanted to talk about today. I want to respond to a couple people who commented on the video topic that I wrote up. Why I quit game hunting, retro video game hunting. I want to respond to some of those people. I want to talk about a recent leak that came out for the Resident Evil 2 remake. One of the first video blogs I made for this channel, I talked about some of the reasons why I quit retro video game hunting. I want to respond to some of the people that commented on this and actually throw out a challenge to a few of my little bit longer term friends here on YouTube. I have a feeling one of them was trolling me at just a touch. That Dallas thrifter, fellow thrift dweller in spirit brother down in Dallas. He's into kicks and that's what kicks or shoes basically sorry and that's what inspired me to challenge a few of these other people but I'll explain that in a minute. But he agrees that uh, the video game prices nowadays are outrageous which you can't really disagree and he noticed in the background I had some shoes there's they're still there he's uh, very up on his shoe game he finds Jordans and stuff in the States we don't find that up here in Canada but he noticed those were Stussy dunks and if you were friends with me before I was on YouTube one of the things that I really loved collecting was shoes I had a ridiculous amount of shoes but nothing compared to my cousins but between all of us we literally had shoes for days over a year we wouldn't be able to uh, wear every single shoe that we owned it was pretty crazy back then. I love Nike Dunks, SB Dunks, most uh, more accurately. But you noticed that, so I wanted to challenge some of these people here to talk about their other passions. But again, stay tuned to the end of the video. We'll talk about that. The Gaming File, longtime friend, actually. Uh, dude, it's a hard knock life. Talking about retro video games, of course it is. Oh, but for him, he was actually one of the first people, when we met him on YouTube, he had a Movember stash on. And it was really weird for him because I was introduced to uh, the gaming file with a mustache. He almost looked like one of the guys from Super Troopers. And when he shaved it off, I was like, who are you? I don't even recognize you. But yeah, we had a little conversation about Movember. And I was telling him, man, this mustache makes me feel greasy. You know, it's very thin. I can't grow the full rest of it. You know, I can grow a Fu Manchu, basically. I think it's my Asian blood. But uh, next year, hopefully, I'll challenge him to an additional challenge to join me next year and my team for Movember. Now this was the troll and the guy who inspired me to shoot this section of the video blog, NT1138, that no good beatnik, I don't know. He was one of the first people when I started on YouTube that kind of inspired me to make YouTube videos. Uh, I liked his channel and he kind of stopped making videos for a while and I think he's on the same boat as me. but. He kind of surmised my explanation of why I don't collect retro video games anymore into one sentence. And I think he was trolling me. Let me know in the comments below. NT1138, in quotes for him. Because I own everything and prices are stupid now. He isn't wrong. <laughs> but I feel a little bit of shots fired there. Actually, NT1138 was the first honorary member of the Thrift Dweller crew. If you were following us back then. And uh, he isn't wrong. Prices are stupid nowadays, but we grew up in a different time, man. Him and I are the end of an era, really. But I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop it there for a minute. I'm gonna throw out some challenges to people who responded to this video. Because of that Dallas thrifter pointing out that I used to love sh collecting shoes, it was one of my other passions. It isn't right now. Like, I sold off a lot of my shoes to pay for my student loans. But I did fall into, like, that's why I made this channel. Uh, I love comic book stuff. I love statues mostly right now. I was kind of into the action figure thing, but right now, Bowen statue collecting is my focus and almost like, I'm not gonna say my passion yet because video games is still my passion. But yeah, my secondary collection focus is Bowen statues, Marvel comic statues from Bowen Designs to be more accurate. If you don't know what Bowen is, subscribe to this channel so you know. But I wanna challenge these people here. I wanna challenge the gaming file. I want to challenge NT1138. I'm going to challenge Pulse of Positivity, good friend as well. Very positive guy. Uh, Canadian Zangief, I want to challenge. The Life and Times of Steve. RPG Tour Guide is another guy I want to challenge. And you know, Ronnie Lane, let's put him on that list. 
and that Dallas Thrifter. Most of you are probably retro video game fans. But what are your secondary hobbies? What are your secondary passions that you like to collect for? Because I'm sure a lot of us right now are like in that collector type mindset. What is your other things? Discuss it in a video. Put it up and tag me or let me know that you shot that video so I can watch it. And maybe I can troll on you, NT1138. Yeah, there's my challenge to y'all. Bang, bang, bang. If anyone else wants to actually respond to this video as well, please feel free. Leave a link to your video in the comments below of this video and I will try my best to watch it. And uh, maybe I will respond to it somehow, in some way. Troll away. Go ahead. Feed the trolls. I'm just, I, honestly, for this channel, I just want to have fun on YouTube. And response videos are really fun for me, so yeah. I'm throwing that out there. Oh, and also, uh, you know who else I want to put on this list? I'm going to put on the Sega Stoner. Respond, what is your secondary hobby? I know he like sold off the majority of his video games, but I'm pretty sure he has another hobby in there. I'm going to guesstimate it is music. Wicca wicca. But anyways, just to finish off this video, responding to people who commented on the last video. Pulse of Positivity, thank you very much for your kind words, sir. Always an inspiration to me. I hope you have a great day as well. Canadian Zangief agrees. He slowly, um, oh, he slowed his retro video game collecting to a crawl. Now, check out his channel linked in the description below. The Life and Times of Steve. Uh, he quit retro collecting. He sold this stuff about two years ago and hasn't looked back since. Are you crazy, dog? I'm just, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. No one could foresee the future, but prices right now are like ridiculous. I'm, that's why I'm selling a lot of my games. Even a two year difference in, in terms of like prices of what you could have got for your games really jumped up maybe two, three fold. It's crazy. Ronnie Lane stated when he was uh, started collecting Earthbound, it was about 70 to 100 bucks. And pretty much any other SNES game would be at most $40 when he started. And he feels me hard, yes. Thank you for feeling me hard, Ronnie. Appreciate that. But yeah, Earthbound, man, that's one of those games I kind of regret not getting back in the day. When I started going to the flea markets and pawn shops and stuff, that was about a $40 game. And that was like the most expensive game I would see out there. I'm like, it's not even a good game. Fuzzy Pickles, what? It, it didn't interest me. I rented it a few times from a local micro play we had here in Winnipeg. I'm sure other Canadians know what that is. And uh, looking back on it now, kind of regret not picking it up. Picking up four or five copies, right? RPG Tour Guide. I bet you he likes to collect RPGs, right? He's been a long time commenter actually. Can't argue with me, of course you can. My, my facts are succinct, sir. The market is not the same as the good old days. The internet ruins everything. And he had, he had one of those emojis with the tongue like, mm. Did the internet ruin the retro video game collecting hobby? To me, possibly a part of it. Just an evolution of where it was gonna go anyway, so. But like with anything, Tulip Mania. If you don't know what that is, Google it. Uh, the retro video game, is it in a bubble? Yes. Will it bust? I think not as fast as people are anticipating it to bust. It'll probably come down slowly. There's a couple videos I've seen on YouTube actually of people asking, like, has the correction happened already in terms of the retro video game market? Personally, I don't think so yet. What is this? Personally, I don't think so yet. I think there is still a ways for it to go down. I think it is coming to a plateau that makes any sense and the way I'm judging that is just by what I see on eBay what I'm seeing on pricecharting.com and locally I still go to the flea markets a lot and seeing a lot of games that are staying on the shelf that used to probably fly off the shelf but let me know what you think in the comments below thank you very much for everyone who responded to my previous videos I would love to keep making videos like this I really do enjoy interacting with the community and uh, hopefully you know since this is a smaller channel it'd be nice to build a little community that tight-knit people you know quality over quantity y'all quality